Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, out on another walk, and this time I'm in Shipley, and I've come to find out all about Shipley Church, and perhaps a little bit about the village as well. And I'm joined today by Peter Sanderson. Here he is. Hello, Peter. Uh, hello, Richard. Thank you very much. You're the organist, aren't you? I am, yes. Yes. And uh, how long have you been an organist at Shipley Church? Oh, uh, 20 years or so. Right. So <laughs> you are the top man to tell me all about uh, some of the features of Shipley Church. I'll try my best. Good man. You, you wrote the guide. <laughs> Yes. So you tell I wrote me. The guide. Shall we take a stroll? I, was, I researched a lot of information for the guide, and of course, being getting old like I am, I can never remember what I wrote. But, well, uh, I never remember what I said in one film to the next, so I'm with you there. However, the uh, the, the, sh the church we're all very fond of, and uh, it's uh, it's Norman in character and and in his historical detail, um, but we believe that it was built in about 1140. Right by the Knights Templars. Oh, okay. Or rather, I think the correct title is Knights Templar. And they were military monks who uh, became very powerful um, in the uh, 12th century and 13th century um, and busied themselves in protecting pilgrims who went to the Crusades. And this place here, Shipley, was one of their English bases from which they operated um, and there's a lot of history about the Knights Templar um, churches who have uh, which have a character of their own. This church as you can see uh, is tall and has a south wall which is very thick and almost defensive in character so because for them it was a, um, a place to be defended um, and a, a base from which uh, people can feel free and safe. So, and behind us, we should say, the River Ada, uh, and you can't see it now because it's pretty much a stream, isn't it? Yeah, it used the, to come the, up. The River Ada was navigable in those yes. days. And, um, and there was a wharf and timbers. There was a wharf, and, a wharf down there. Yeah. And that's where people set out um, for the coast from here. Right. Uh, quite amazing. And, of course, they believed that they would receive uh, everlasting um, forgiveness and peace providing uh, they visited Jerusalem once in their earthly lives. Gosh. So uh, that's why they, uh, why they wanted to go to the Crusades. Ah, I see. And actually, I know if we go into your porch, there is a, an interesting artifact which links us with the River Ada, the, yeah. this peculiar looking stone here, which is could you tell us what it's believed to be? Well, it's believed to be a lump of ironstone um, that was perhaps used at the wharf for tying up the um, flat bottom barges and ships. Right. Um, that were actually in, involved in bringing um, all sorts of stone to build the church with up, up the river, um, as well as uh, taking people away on, on, the, on, on their the, travels. Yes, yes. And I mean, that's the thing, you know, the history is so long you just enter the church when you visit today you'd have no suspicion really that anything like that ever happened because there's no river there's no wharf that's right the, the, the first thing i noticed when i came in the church is is apart from the north aisle is how narrow it is if we look back here it seems quite it's quite a long um nave yeah and then a very narrow well a, a very narrow nave and tall and tall very yeah. tall the roof used to have a flat roof on it until Victorian restoration that removed it. Oh, did it? Yeah. Oh, okay. It used to be a flat ceiling. Right. Oh, I, oh, I see. Yes, yes. Oh, a flat ceiling. Yeah. And so now we can see the beams. Yeah. yeah. And, which is nice, really, to yeah, see the beams. Yes, much nicer. Yes, much yeah. nice. Because yeah. <laughs> I know the Victorians did a lot of bad things to churches, <laughs> altering and stuff, but it's nice to be able actually to see the beams yeah. And, yeah. and get that sense of uh, even more height. The North Isle was... Um, um, added to the church as late as uh, 1830, I think. There were two periods in which the church was restored, 1830s and the 1890s. Um, and, and, and added because the congregation had grown? Yes, um, I, I think so. And um, the family who owned uh, the uh, Nepcastle estate in those years were um, very devout, 
Right. And they spent an enormous amount of money in restoring this church and adding to it. Right. Uh, they installed the uh, stained glass windows that you see, which perhaps we can have a look at yes, in a minute. It, yeah. Um, the, they provided the choir stalls and the, the pulpit and the organ and the whole of this north aisle. Um, a great deal of work was done in yes. about 1893, I think. Gosh, so a lot, a lot is uh, owed to them, really. For yes, but that's not the ancient part of the building, no. of course. Yes. Shall we stroll down, down towards yeah. the altar and have yeah. a look? So coming up there, you were mentioning the, the, the glass windows, um, at the, uh, the stained glass windows at the far end there, which do look very resplendent and, and command uh, uh, your attention as, as soon as you come through this magnificent... Um, Chancery Arch. Just while we're here, just have a look at this chapel. Oh, I know. I noticed these as I came in. They're rather splendid, aren't they? Aren't they? On both both sides of this arch. They look like they were carved only yesterday. <laughs> I think they're quite uh, quite ancient. Quite though. ancient. The windows themselves are designed by a man called Charles Kemp, who was a Sussex man, and he was responsible uh, for some beautiful work that he uh, he believed was um, reminiscent of 14th century stained glass medieval glass right he set up his own studios in london and produced over 5000 windows for churches cathedrals and colleges and and, and of course you have uh, to your to the church's benefactors many of the memorials and things, oh, yes. and, and i mean this one here you were telling me about before we started filming a, an immense amount of craftsmanship and artistry gone into this wonderful yes. piece of marble here it's an alabaster tomb um belonging to the carroll family who were a who, significant family yeah they were a prominent family in the area at least uh, for 200 years or so Wow. Um, their fortunes coming from the making of iron, iron making in Sussex. Yes, and you, and you see that in, in the iron stone in some of the buildings and some of the churches, although not so much in this one, funnily enough. No, that's true. But yeah. um, you'll find references to the Carroll family at St George's Church in West Grinstead as well. Yes. In fact, uh, I remember going around and Richard Verrill, <laughs> who took us around West Grinstead, did, um, yeah. did just that, pointed, yeah. them, pointed them all out. Yeah. Which is, uh, which is good. So this is your organ. Tell me about the, 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 the organ and the pipes. You've got oh, pipes on both sides, which is quite interesting. Yes, uh, they date from the 19th century. Um, the organ was um, converted uh, into an electrical um, uh, action in about 1975. Right. So it's not particularly, um, the console itself is not particularly old or, 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 or valuable. There's several of these Walker organs in the, in the area, actually. Is um, it nice to play? Yeah. And the sound? Got, it's the got sound. a nice reverential sound to it. Um, yes. And um, it, it, it suffers from one particular um, character, the, this Norman archway uh, between the choir and the nave blocks the sound of choir and organ quite considerably. The other interesting thing is you graze sheep, don't you? Yes. In, in the graveyard, which yes. is fantastic. I guess that keeps, it saves having to get the mower out. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I'm assuming. We've, we've got a herd of about five or six um, sheep. I think they're, I think they're a fairly rare breed. Right. Uh, from Wales. There's some black ones over there, but we can't, we, oh, perhaps right. we should go and see them in a minute. Facing the tower, as you can see, the tower there, spireless, very, yes. a very... Um... Used to have a little um, steeple on it. Oh, right. Oh, um, did it? But during the restoration, it was taken down. It had uh, wooden shingles uh, on the top of it. Oh, OK. Uh, do you know if the church, like uh, a number of the churches, um, w was covered in a, uh, a lime, what do you call it, a lime wash? I don't think this one was. No. Um, a lot were. Yes. And I don't think this one was. Of course, a lot, a lot of valuable wall paintings were covered up when they decided to do that yes. kind of thing. Well, Richard, thank you very much for taking us round. It's a pleasure. Um, it's been an absolute joy. So, ladies and gentlemen, do join me again when I go exploring somewhere else. But from Shipley in West Sussex, from Peter and I, goodbye. Bye.